it's Writing Wednesday. One of the most common pieces of advice given to writers and aspiring writers is read widely. Read in the genre that you're writing in, read in other genres, read good books, read great books, maybe even read a few bad books, but read widely. And that is certainly a piece of advice I have always taken to heart, not because it's good advice for writers, but simply because I know no other way to exist than to read pretty constantly. But it does tend to pose its problems as a writer if you read a lot. And one of the greatest problems for me that reading widely as a writer poses is the problem of what I like to call the I pokey forky book. What I mean by this is the book that you pick up and you read and it's so good, you just fall into it, you drown yourself in it, you become absorbed in it, and you're so amazed at how great the writing is. I had this experience twice recently, once with Kate Atkinson's novel Life After Life and then again with Khaled Hosseini's And the Mountains Echoed. In fact, you're so amazed at how great the writing is that at some point, it's guaranteed any time during a book like this that you really, really love and think is brilliantly written, you're going to have the thought, maybe fleeting, maybe lingering, why do I even bother writing? Why do I bother picking up a pen or sitting down on my computer? It is useless for me to write because I will never be able to write as well as this author or that author whose work I'm so engrossed with, and as a result, I should just give up. Probably not everyone carries it to the next step, which I do, which is I should just give up writing and instead poke my eyes out with a fork because I'll never be able to write this well. On the face of it, this is not rational. First, obviously, because once I decided to give up writing, there would be no added value brought in by the act of poking my eyes out with a fork that would make me less likely to write. But also, more to the point, it's irrational even, you know, if you leave the fork out of it, it's irrational to say, I'm never going to write because I can't write as well as X person. It's not like writing is a huge international competition and everybody's trying to be judged, you know, on a scale and everybody below a certain cutoff point just doesn't get to write. I think in our minds we maybe all have that cutoff point of people we think are below that and shouldn't get to write, but it's very easy to place yourself there when you're comparing yourself to someone who you think does the job beautifully and whose work so engrosses and involves you that when you close the book you feel bereft because you're not with those characters anymore. I mean, that's the way I felt with both those books that I read recently that so absorbed me, and I definitely had eye pokey forky moments when I thought, Okay, maybe I won't poke my eyes out with a fork, but maybe I should just give up writing because I will never be this good. Then, of course, there's the other experience that you sometimes have while reading a book, and that's when you read a book that is good and interesting and reasonably well written, but your response is not, I could never do this. Your response is something more like, oh yeah, I could do that. Just the other day I read a book called The Bookman's Tale that fell into this category. This can be encouraging and heartening because you can look at it and say, well, look, they did something much like the sort of thing that I'm capable of, maybe even similar to a book I'm working on now. Certainly my response with The Bookman's Tale was, wow, that book has a lot of similarities to my unpublished novel, Illumination. If that could get printed by a big publisher and I could find it smacking me in the face on the display table of chapters, maybe that can happen to my book someday. Unfortunately, it's very easy for that line of thinking to slide into if they can get their book published, why can't I? And then, of course, there's the other response of reading a book that you know is terrible. I'm not going to show you an example of one of those. We've all read terrible books, but I don't need to shame any authors here. But, you know, we have had the experience, I think most writers, of reading a book that we thought was just, oh, so badly written, and think, how is their work getting out there and getting published and getting these big publishers and getting these huge sales, and mine is not? And you may be right back to the eye pokey forky thing again, because if the world of publishing and reading is so unfair that people who are terrible writers can get bazillion dollar book deals and I can't, then maybe I should just poke my eyes out with a fork anyway. Of course all of these are overreactions. But I think that, again, leaving out the fork, these are real reactions that we all have as writers when we read other people's books, ranging from, you know, despair that I'll never write that well, to anger that I write so much better than that and yet I haven't achieved this level of success. I think there's some good antidotes for that, and one of them I think comes with the original sort of eye pokey forky book, the book that you think is so great. Um, just by reading a few reviews. For example, after I read uh, And the Mountains Echoed, which I just thought was the most perfect book while I was reading it that a human could ever write, um, I went and read a few reviews of it after the fact, which is usually when I read reviews, and I discovered a lot of reviewers didn't like it. I saw reviewers calling it 
uh, sentimental and saying that the plot was uh, predictable and formulaic. And I was like, oh my goodness, this was so good. How can people say this about this wonderful, wonderful book? But there is no book so wonderful that someone somewhere has not trashed it in a review. I can assure you, I've checked. And while that's incredibly devastating as a writer to realize you'll never write the book that everybody loves, because there is no such book, it's also wonderfully freeing because you realize even the book that I think is fabulous, somebody else thinks is terrible. And that means that this is all a very subjective game anyway. Yes, some writers are objectively better than others, but everyone is going to rank that scale somewhat differently. And what that fact means, at least what I choose to interpret it to mean, is that maybe what I'm writing is going to be somebody else's eye pokey forky book someday. Maybe somebody else is going to read my book and say, why am I even bothering to write? This is so good, I can never be as good as Trudy Morgan Cole. I mean, I doubt it, but it could happen. And if it did happen, I would hope that writer would not go on to poke their eyes out with a fork or even to give up writing, but rather would be encouraged and hardened and go on with goals to shoot for. And that's what I try to do too, even when I want to poke my eyes out with a fork.